Uh, how about if I ask you to lift up your Bible? How many of you bring your Bible? Come on, come on. All right, all right. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. God is good. Tell your neighbor God is good. My wife and I, we just came back from Forest Lawn to attend the uh, funeral of Eric Ching, the uh, late wife of our mayor, Eric Ching. And uh, it was uh, quite, quite, uh, you know, it's a mixed feeling, you know, to attend that kind of funeral. And I announced it last week that she got into a car accident and she was, uh, she was instantly killed. And um, so in that funeral, how would you feel when you attend a funeral like that? It's, it's not easy. And uh, many, many people attended the uh, the funeral service. And uh, there are many things that may come up in your mind. Most of you know her, and um, she is a uh, dedicated Christian. She is uh, active in Bible study, and she, she is a loving woman. And, uh, but uh, have you ever thought, why such a person like that why a person that loves the Lord so much, she, she died like that. She, she was only 49 years old. And uh, I remember what I said several times ago, s several times in the past, I don't know, two, three years, that uh, have you ever thought that whether you go to church or not, whether you, go, whether you are a Christian or not, um, whether you are a believer or not, we all face the same um, challenges. We all face same situations, problems. So what is the difference? I do believe that the difference is when you face it, you are not alone, not only because you have friends, but because you have faith in Jesus. And that is what has been said in the funeral service numerous time, because there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. Yes, when you go through tough situation, and even when I talked to Eric Ching, you know, he said, uh, I told him that we as a church, we prayed for him and, and his two daughters. And, and he said, Pastor, I've been praying all day and night, praying and praying and praying. But there is hope that in Jesus, in Jesus, there is no separation. There is... There is, uh, that is the difference. When you have faith, you know, even death cannot separate you. When, when, when you have faith in Jesus, God can encourage you in times of um, challenges, when you go through tough times, and uh, even in that funeral service, there were songs, there was praise, and, um, and, uh, and, and people give numerous uh, words of encouragement and it is so it is so good to witness that kind of funeral and again I want to encourage all of us that uh, I, I, I remember one verse in the Bible that says better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will take it to heart so uh, it, is, it is better to go to the house of mourning. It is better to go to the funeral house than to go to the house of feasting. Why? Because that is the end of all men. And we, the living, we need to pay attention to it. We need to pay attention how we live because God is the only source of our encouragement. So uh, with that, how about if we bow our heads one, one more time and let's pray. Father, we thank you that in you there is hope. Father, we thank you that, that in you there is no separation. Even death cannot separate us because you are the living God. And you died on the cross and you were raised from the dead. And our faith is on you, O God. And we know that one day we will gather together again with the person, with the people, with the family, with the loved one. And we know that you will... You, at that time, there is no more tears, no more sickness, no more second death because you are with us. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we lift up Eric Ching unto you. 
We lift up these two daughters, Ashley and Audrey, unto you. And we pray for your continuous encouragement. Be upon them. We as a church, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray and we also pray, O oh God, that you open our eyes. You open our eyes. Why, why don't you pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, open my eyes that I can know you more, that I can understand you more, that I have more knowledge about you and to know you even more intimate, intimately. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. I want you to open to the book of Ephesians and I'm going to continue what I preached last Sunday. And uh, it's from the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 15. Are you with me? All right. How many of you were here last week? How many of you still remember what I preached last week? How many of you got something last week? How many of you took note last week? How many of you review your notes last week? <laughs> what else? <laughs> Well, I am a note taker because I do believe that the word of God is so powerful and I, I said it numerous times that one word from God can change your life. One word from God changed my life and it is a transformation word and I look forward, even as I preach the word of God today, I, I believe God is going to also speak, not only to you, but also he will speak to me. And um, if you read, I'm, I'm reading from the uh, New King James translation, Ephesians chapter 1. And um, before we read verse 15, let me give you a preface here that Paul, the apostle, he was writing to the uh, people, the Ephesians at that time. And if you read from verse 1, Paul was, was writing to the Christians. And if you go to church and uh, you have been going to church for many times, many years, and you have received Jesus, this word is for you. If you have not received Jesus, I do believe that this word is also for you because God can talk in many different ways and uh, He loves you. God loves you. He is a good God. How many of you realize that He is a good God? Let me see your hand. Now, maybe you have heard this many times. Maybe you said it also. God is good all the time. All the time, God is all right, but uh, when you experience the goodness of God, wow, you would, you would imagine and uh, you would say, wow, you are so good. I thought you are this good, but you are, you are better than what I thought because he is a good God. Now, Paul, he addressed the Christians, the believers, the saints in the book of Ephesians. He said to the saints and who has been faithfully, faithfully, can you say faithfully? They have been faithfully serving, and they, 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 they know Jesus. They were good. They were safe. But in verse 15, it says, Therefore, I also, I mean, let's, let's read together. You, if you bring your Bible, you can follow reading your Bible, and, or, or you can read from the screen. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayer. So Paul the Apostle prays for them, and I pray for you. I pray for you right now. I pray. I, I thank God for you. I thank God for your service. I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank God for your ministry. You are good. Look at your neighbor and say, you are good. All right, and I thank you, and I pray, and I pray this, this verse. I, I use this verse to pray for you. The, the most powerful prayer, I believe, is the prayer according to the Bible, you know, because it's already agreed in heaven. So I prayed, I prayed, I prayed like Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul prayed, you know. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of what? Not only wisdom, but the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and verse 18 we are going to zero in on verse 15 and we are going to look at verse 15 uh, again and again and again because that's the verse that we are going to focus today the eyes of your how about if we read it together three two one the eyes of your understanding enlightened that you may know 
what is the hope of his calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 18. Let's zero in on verse 18. The eyes of your understanding enlightened. I said last week that I didn't really know that my understanding had eyes. And uh, if my understanding has eyes, if my understanding has vision, if my understanding has perception, and the Apostle Paul prayed, prayed that my understanding be enlightened, be opened, that I can see, that light, that light, can you say light? The light, the light, and uh, the light of God, the light, Jesus is the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when, when, when Paul the Apostle said, that the eye of our understanding be enlightened, then it is possible that my understanding could be blind. My understanding could be blurred. I couldn't see. So understanding, understanding. It's just sometimes when we talk about, uh, when we read the Bible, sometimes we are too to uh, focus in the words, not knowing that actually it is spirit and life. Jesus said, the words that I said to you is spirit and life. So it is not just word. It is not just the, the word understanding. It's just like when you read the previous verse, the spirit of wisdom. If you read it carefully, it is not just wisdom, but the, all right, the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. So it is not just wisdom. When we talk about wisdom, sometimes we talk about our understanding, about, about our knowledge. No, no, it is the spirit of wisdom. It is amazing, you know. And so uh, my understanding could be blind. And that's why Paul the Apostle prayed. And uh, last week I mentioned that blindness is not terminal. And uh, so I could be alive. But my understanding still don't have enough light to see. I could, I, I could be alive. You could be alive. You could be sitting right now. But you don't have enough light. You don't have enough light to be able to see so that you can move on from God's perspective on this earth as you are alive. And uh, so, according to this verse... God wants us to have a renewed vision. We need enlightenment. Our eyes need to be enlightened. Our eyes need to be open so that we can see. We can see. We thought we saw it, but until you get the revelation from God, you will not be able to see it. How many of you, when you read the Bible, maybe you have read several times that particular verse, but one day, as you read that verse again, you, ah! How many of you experienced that? I saw, that's the revelation, that word come alive to you. Now, Paul said that your eyes, that your eyes might be enlightened, the eyes of your understanding. Um, you can change. You can change your hair. You can change your clothes. You can change your address. You can change your phone number. You can change your spouse. You can change. You can move to another church. You can change residence. But if you do not change the way you see, if you don't change your perspective, if you don't allow God to, to, to enlighten you, then you will keep on experiencing 
the same thing over and over and over again even though you have tried to change on the outside because the change is only outwardly but nothing inwardly. Are you with me? That's why Paul said, hey, that the eyes of your understanding, that you can see it differently. That you can see it according to God's eyes. That you can see it from the positive side. That you can see according to destiny, according to the future, according to the calling that God has for each one of you. Well, as I look around, I can figure out, I can almost sure that you usually sit next to someone that you know. And if I ask you, if I give you 30 seconds to mention, to say five good things about the person sitting next to you, usually, and you begin to think now, okay, okay, time is ticking. And usually, and I give you 30 seconds to, to say five good things about the person sitting next to you, uh, you, you need more time. Or maybe, maybe you, 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 you only find uh, two or three and then you pass. But if I give you 15 seconds to tell the bad things about the person sitting next to you, maybe you, get, you will get 10 bad things. <laughs> Not only the person sitting next to your left, next to your right, but also to the person sitting in front of you and behind you. <laughs> How about if you begin to allow God to, to change you the way you think, the way you see, your perspective, your vision. How many of you want to, to, to have your eyes of understanding be enlightened? I do. Okay. So how about right now? Let's allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Let's close your eyes right now. Father, I pray. I pray right now. And I want you to pray. And I want you to say to God directly. I want you to say to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open my, my eyes. That my understanding will be enlightened. Help me to see the good thing. of My husband, my, my wife, my friends, my roommates, my, my leaders. Help me not to focus on the negative things. Help me to see them from your perspective. Lord God, test our eyes. Check our eyes. Not only our eyes, but our vision, our perspective, the way we see people, especially our loved ones. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. And I realize that sometimes the one that is very close to you, you hurt the most. How many of you heard the Holy Spirit say something to you? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. God is so good that He reveals things and He wants us to change. Not God doesn't he doesn't teach us to pray, Lord, change my wife. I pray, Lord, change me. Is that a good amen? amen. Jeremiah 5.21, Jeremiah 5.21, New King James Translation, it says, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, without understanding, you have eyes who... Without understanding, who have eyes and see not? And who have ears and hear not? You have eyes and do not see. You have ears, do not hear. That's why Jesus said several times in the Bible, those that, that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And uh, if you begin to change your, 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 the way you see, the way you, uh, 
your, your, your perspective, then you can see the invisible and you can do the impossible. And I remember last week I also mentioned about enlighten, 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 in, enlighten. It's in you. The light is in you. God wants the light in you to shine. God wants the light in you, in you to shine. And you can understand. This verse mentioned about without understanding, we need understanding. Understand. We need to understand. Understanding is... The truth you stand under. You stand on the truth. That you can understand. You can understand. Because if you don't allow God to show you the new perspective, the new, the new uh, vision, the way you look at people, then you'll not be enlightened and you will be in the same place, in the situation um, for a long time. Over and over again, not knowing that actually God wants to set you free. Actually, God wants to heal you. Actually, God wants to promote you. And uh, I remember a story in the Bible about the lame man for uh, 38 years. He was lame for how many years? 38 years. For 38 years, in that story, in that story, among all the many sick, pe sick people, Jesus just came to this one particular man and Jesus asked, Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? And if you look at that context, he, he, he did not reply yes or no. If Jesus asks you, do you want to be healed and you are sick? I think, uh, well, I think about uh, two things at least. Number one, why did Jesus ask that question? Why did Jesus ask that question? I thought, hmm, uh, uh, excuse me, Lord. I, th I think that is not proper. I think uh, with all due respect, Jesus, I think that is... the. the, the that is not the right question to ask. And from the other side of the coin, when I look at the answer of this lame man, he was lame for 38 years. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? I think the answer should be either yes or no, right? <laughs> but he said, well, uh, nobody helped me uh, when the water uh, move, you know, nobody helped me to, to go to jump into the pool. And uh, so, well, just say yes or no. Just say, just, just answer Jesus to the point. Well, you may say, um, well, he, he's been lame for 38 years. But uh, I thought when I read that scripture again, <laughs> I, I believe he, he, uh, <laughs> he could have rolled he, he, he lame, okay, but he could have rolled, okay, just uh, after 38 years. But uh, uh, some people I learned, they didn't want to be healed. Some people didn't want to be healed. Are you with me? I am still wearing my suit. That's why it's hot. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. I haven't wear my suit for a long time. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I, 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 I saw some of you, uh, you look at me and you, you feel hot looking at me. <laughs> All right. For 38 years, some of you don't want to be healed. Some of you don't want to have your eyes enlightened. Some of you, even though you have read this verse, last week I preached about this, but some of you still don't want to allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes so that your understanding will be opened. Some people refuse to recover. Some people refuse to let it go. Some people would rather hold on to their disappointment and bitterness. Will you be made whole? 
Do you want to be healed after 38 years? The answer from that lame man, I learned that sometimes, sometimes, your outer action says something, but your inner action says something else. You said, yes, but mm. are you with me? Do you enjoy the pity? Do you enjoy and you like to stay sick? Well, not really, Pastor. That is uh, what a question. But uh, honestly, having lived for almost 60 years now, I learned that some people enjoy being sick. Some people. Not all of you, but some people. Why? Because they like the attention. They like the attention that people give. Oh, it's my sugar that is acting up again. Well, deal with it. I have problem with sugar from time to time, my glucose drop. I have my secret weapon in my briefcase, which is granola bar. <laughs> I have them in all of our cars. So that when that happened, and I went to the doctor, in fact, I'm going to go for a checkup, follow-up checkup this week. But I don't want, I, I, I want to be healed and I don't want to stay sick. Some people want to stay sick. Some people would like to blame it when they grew up. Oh, it's because my teacher, because my parents, because of my <laughs> wife, my husband. Don't blame it on others. How many of you learned that usually somebody else's problem, somebody else's sin is worse than your sin? My sin is usually not as bad as yours. Okay. So we want to allow God to change our perspective. But uh, I can just share, I can deliver the message, I can share the message to you. But you have to make a decision and you need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, change me. Lord, change my paradigm. Lord, uh, check my vision, check my eyes. Uh, I want to have this, this, this vision examined. Uh, please fix me. I want, I, I want to, to learn to see it from your perspective, God. That's why we have Mega Cam. That's why we announced it for the last several weeks. And uh, that's why we, we have this. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm proud of our young people. Come on. Uh, Mega Cam is still a month away from now, but they already <laughs> made this, uh, this, this bulletin very well prepared. Come on, give them a big hand one more time. And uh, it is amazing. And when I, when I open the, f the, 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 the first page here, it says, see things from his perspective. What? See things from his perspective. Not your perspective. Let's zero in. Let's make a commitment. Parents, send your young people to make a camp. And everybody said. Oh, yes, that's why when Sarah announced that some of you sponsor some of the people that couldn't make it financially, that is why we are here, because we want to equip you. We want to equip you. We want to equip the young people as well as the adults. That's why we also have this Renew. What is that renew? Because we, our, our eyes, our vision, our minds needs to be renewed. Are you with me? 
And that's why, because of time, and we prayed, we took time, and we discussed, we brainstormed in the pastoral team, when can we have this conference for those that don't go to mega camp? When? So we look at the calendar, because after this, we have, we pretty soon, we are going to prepare for Lights on Miracle Hill. Are you excited? Because, oh yes, praise the Lord, because God has given us a vision. It's not only an event, but it is a vision that God has given us. So we want you to be healthy spiritually, emotionally, relationally. We want you to be healthy. Your family is healthy. Your marriage is healthy. Your finance is healthy. That's why we have been doing a lot of training, 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 training. But not only the training that you need, you need to practice it. You need the outlet. You need to, you need to be able to do it. You need to practice it. And by God's grace, God will use every one of us. And His name will be glorified. That's why some, some of you ask... Uh, Ask me this question. So what is the agenda? What is the plan for this two-day conference, this renew, you know? Well, you will learn about dealing with life's baggage. Well, I don't have baggage, Pastor. Come and allow the Holy Spirit to show it to you. Come and allow the Lord to speak to you deeper. Amen. Allow Him to study you. Not only you study the Bible, but allow Him to study us. What are we going to learn in this two-day conference, Pastor? Renewing your mind. This is from the speakers, you know, renewing your minds. So we want our minds renewed. It is not a coincidence that I am sharing to you right now. It is important for our eyes, our perspective, our vision to be renewed. What else will we learn? We will learn about when your soul hurts. How to deal with it when your spirit hurts. And we are also going to learn about demonic oppression. Some of you are going through oppression because of the demonic forces against you. God wants to set you free. Oh, praise the Lord. And uh, <laughs> if you remember when Pastor Him shared Sometime last month when he went to Santa Maria and when he and his wife, was, they were ministered. And this, this same couple, the same couple that ministered to Pastor Him and his wife, they will be here. Plus, they will come with their friends. And their friends, I was told that their friends is the, uh, uh, he is very prophetic and he is very, uh, well, he, 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 he was the uh, assistant to Paul Kane. If you remember that name, if you have heard that name. Paul Kane is a prophet. It's like Sean Boltz, you know. But, uh, but actually, he, he was one of Sean Boltz's mentor. And uh, he, can, he is very, very sensitive to the voice of the Lord. And uh, he can read what is in your heart, what is in your mind. What, what are you thinking right now? Sometimes he exposes it. <laughs> is that good? Oh, is that scary? <laughs> oh, but you know that our God is awesome. And we do this because we know that God loves us. He loves us so much. He wants to use us. He has been using you and He wants to use you even more. So, say it with me. Lord Jesus... Open my eyes. Enlighten my eyes. He will open your eyes. You will be able to see it again. You will be able to see it in a different way. So maybe what you need is, uh, is not a new situation. Maybe what you need is not a new job. 
Maybe what you need is not a new wife, a new husband, but perhaps what you need is a new perspective. Thank you, Jesus. Could it be possible that God is sending people into my life to change me? How many of you don't like to change? Me, number one. I don't like to change. That's why God sent people to change me. I thank God for my wife because she is the best person to help me change. She would say things, she, she knows exactly my red button. She knows exactly, <laughs> and she knows exactly when to say it and when not to say it. And sometimes, you know, during the first year of marriage, oh, it's kind of tough. Oh, God, why those uh, seasoned men and women of God they said that marriage is beautiful. <laughs> and my first year of marriage, you know, I, you know, <laughs> I, some, sometimes I burst out in anger. And uh, then I realized that I was wrong. So I, I, uh, I was a Christian already. Filled with the Holy Spirit, but I still have anger. Some of you look at me like, really? <laughs> you didn't have one? Come on now. Wait until somebody cut you on the freeway. <laughs> I, I burst out in anger and then I said, oh, Joyce, I'm sorry. And she said, okay, Paul, I forgive you. And the next five minutes, ten minutes, it, as if nothing happened. Wow, but when she made mistake and when she said sorry, I said, hmm. I'm sorry, Paul. Hmm. <laughs> ah. And then the next day or two when she did something just not even close to what she did, I would burst out in anger. Remember what you did three days ago? Well, I thought you forgave me. Well, I only said, hmm. <laughs> so, maybe God is sending your friends in Kersel to change you. Why don't you at least tell your neighbor, that's, that's a good point, that's a good point. God put me in a problem to build me. Jesus. That's why Paul said in the book of Ephesians, the verses that we just read, Paul said to all of us right now, you have this opportunity, a chance to be an awesome person. How many of you like that? Every one of you, you have the opportunity to be an awesome person. What you need is just more light. Just turn on the lights. About six weeks ago, I shared to you about your shadow that has been haunting you. Just turn on the light. The shadow of your past, the shadow of your failure, the shadow of your sin. Just turn on the light. Turn on the light. And spend time in the Word. Spend time in the Bible. Read the Word. But I don't understand it, Pastor. Even if you don't understand it, read the next verse. You will understand. Oh, I don't understand it either. Next, read the next chapter. I believe in the whole book, there are at least some that you can understand, right? Say right, amen. Thank you. <laughs> at least you can understand some. 
Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Spend time in the Word. Spend time. It's either the Word will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Word. Say that again, Pastor. No, you listen to the tape. It's very simple. <laughs> All right. It's either the word. What did I say? <laughs> the word keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the word. All right. Thank you, Lord. Lights, lights, lights. Oh. Enlightenment comes in stages. I shared to you last week that light can hurt your eye. Light can hurt your eye. Even though some of you have been praying, Lord, I want to see you. Really? Because when he reveals his truth to you, you may not like it. That's why God revealed it to you in stages so that you will not overwhelmed. So we will understand and we, our love towards him will grow because he first loved us. That's why as we learn that enlighten, enlightenment comes in stages, you should not make sudden decision. I shared last week that the biggest mistake many people make is they make permanent decision over temporary situation. Because they were in haste, they were in a hurry, they rushed. I learned, I learned talking about many people make permanent decisions over temporary situation. I learned from Esau. In the Bible, there was a story. Esau, Esau is the twin brother of Jacob. If you read the Bible, you will find many verses that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and why Jacob? It's supposed to be Esau. It's supposed to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Why? Why it, it was not written that way? Because I believe last month, Pastor Dion spoke about, he preached about the most expensive food in the world. That lentil, that soup. Because it was so expensive. Why? Because from that soup, because, because uh, Jacob tricked his brother Esau from uh, by using that soup, I will give you the soup because Esau was hungry, hungry, hungry. How many of you are hungry? Hungry is a temporary situation. Don't make permanent decision just because you are in that situation. You are hungry. Okay, now I sell. I let go. I give away my birthrights. What is birthright, Pastor? Birthright, birthright is talking about your future. Birthright is talking about your, your destiny. Birthright is talking about the good things, the promises that God has given you. Birthright, the benefits, all those things. Because of the birthrights, Esau trait with soup. Come on. Esau trade with soup. So the birthright is being compromised for a bowl of soup. Sometimes we give Jacob too much credit. Jacob stole the birthright. Jacob was very tricky. Jacob was so smart that he tricked he trick his own brother with a soup. Don't give Jacob too much credit. 
I do believe Esau was stupid. Come on now. It's not fair to give Jacob too much credit. Esau was stupid. Come on now, if you have, uh, if you, if you just bought a brand new Mercedes, and I come to you, would you treat your Mercedes with a bottle of water? And then you said, yeah, yes, yes, and you said, whoa, he tricked you well. No, you're stupid. Sometimes, sometimes I learn that, how many of you dare to admit that <sighs> you have done stupid stuff in the past? All of us do. All of us did. <sighs> the enemy offers you a trick. The enemy would offer you a trick, but the trick was actually not that good. It may look good at the moment, but it's not good. So don't glorify the trick. It is our stupidity that we have to watch for. And be careful. Because the trick is not really that good when you consider you're giving away your future. You're giving away your future. You're giving away your next 30 years for the next 30 minutes or even less. Let your eyes be enlightened. Paul is praying that the saints, the believers, the faithful will see, have a new vision, new perspective. God, I see your plan is greater than, than all this temptation, all these things. Even if you fall, somebody came to me crying just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this, 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 this man is very nice. And uh, so I spent time with him. He said, Pastor Paul, how about if I sometime in the future, I, I, I fail you? How about, some, how about if sometime in the future, I, I fail God? I said, the answer is very simple. Get up. Ask forgiveness. Get up. But sometimes... It is easier said than done because sometimes seeing hurts. When you hear the word, Lord, okay, I want to see you. And then you are being enlightened and the spirit of God speaks to you in your heart. Forgive. You need to forgive him. You need to forgive her. Oh no. Thank you for the enlightenment, but no. Seeing hurts. When you learn about giving, giving, <laughs> oh no, don't want to guess. Because when you learn, when you see the lights and uh, you want to give, and uh, oh, it, it hurts sometimes when you see <laughs> and you want to Give, it hurts. But if you allow God, if you allow God to shine His light on you, the way you see things will be different. The first time I begin to tithe, give my first 10% of my allowance, 
I received from my parents, I haven't worked at that time, nobody taught me about giving. When I read the Bible, oh, I need to give. But I didn't work at the time. I was still a student. I received allowance from my parents. They sent me money from Indonesia. But uh, I learned, okay, I, I don't give from my tuition fee and then I couldn't go to college because no money to pay tuition. But I can give from my, hello, allowance. And I still remember the first time I gave my tithe, my palm was wet. I was nervous. Oh God, oh God. Uh, never give this much. Uh, well, it's a lot for me because much is relative, right? So, uh, <laughs> so I give, and I was joyful. The eyes of my understanding is enlightened. I I change the way I look at people. I remember. <laughs> I shared to the pastoral team sometime, several days ago that uh, we were so on fire. We, we want to see, the, we want to show, we want to share the love of Jesus to anyone, anybody. So we would go from campus to campus and we would partner two by two and uh, we would share to others. And it happened that uh, Magda is one of my partners at the time. Do you still remember that? When we partner to share the gospel to one of our friends. And he received Jesus. Wow, we are so excited because you know what? In the past, I couldn't care less. How about us? Maybe, maybe we are we're, we're careless now. As long as we are at church, as long as we are safe. But I don't care about my friends. No, 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 no. God will enlighten your eyes. I remember one of the testimonies that probably I haven't shared this in the, uh, in the congregation was uh, my roommate. You know, we have, we, have <clears throat> we have three roommates. One of them is uh, the person that I received Jesus from. Uh, you know, he, his name is the same. Uh, he, he has the same first name as me. His name is also Paul. And uh, so uh, one of our roommates, he has not received Jesus yet. And uh, so... We ministered to them, and then he received Jesus, but he has to work at 7-Eleven. And uh, he has to work at 7-Eleven graveyard time on Saturday. So on Sunday, he couldn't go to church. He couldn't go to church. So I, I, I talked to my other roommate, how about if we work so that he can go to church? We took turn. And we work at 7-Eleven so that one of our roommates, the other roommates, can go to church. Give your time, 12 to 8. Why? Because God changed the way I see things. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. In conclusion, I have three points. I hope I can cover all these things in seven minutes. If not, we can always continue next week, right? Right? right. Okay, only this side. How about that side? <laughs> Verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of our, your understanding enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power, of His power. So Paul, Paul wants to examine our eyes. Paul wants to check our eyes right now. How do you see your hope? Do you have a purpose in life? Do you have a purpose in life right now? 
Paul is saying, let me see your eyes. Let me see your vision. How do you see things? I want you to see your purpose. I want you to see your possession. I want you to see your power. The first one is purpose. Can you, can you say purpose? Can you see your purpose in life? Can you see your purpose? Why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you going through what you are going through? I remember many years ago, when I was in college, I, at one time, you know, for, for a period of a long time, I was frustrated because after I received Jesus, are you with me? After I became a Christian, my GPA went down. Some of you have heard this, but hang on with me. I want you to pay attention. Before I received Jesus, my GPA was, I was in the president's list, 3.8 something. And then the second semester, I was about, my GPA was Beyond 3.6 something. It was pretty good considering I, when I came to U.S., I didn't speak English well. My second language was not English. My second language was German. Serious. <laughs> now it's gone. I can understand, but uh, to speak it is dif difficult. It was pretty good. And then I received Jesus. After I received Jesus, then my GPA went down. And I, you know, some of you may thought, but, but pastor, probably, probably you didn't study because you received Jesus. And that's what, my, that's what my parents thought. My mom, especially at that time, you, your GPA went down because you go to church too much. I said, no, mom, no, no, no. I studied, I studied very hard. I studied very hard. I bought this, uh, the, the, this hatchback Corolla and uh, I, I have, uh, uh, what do you call that, a sleeping bag. And when, when I have exams, I didn't go back home. I slept in the parking lot. I studied, I studied, as, I, I studied and my GPA kept on going downhill until it was one. Until I was kicked out from college. Listen, students, this is not an excuse for you, okay? <laughs> you have to pay attention that I did my best. I came from a very prestigious high school in Indonesia. And all of my friends that continued their education in America, they, on the average, they, 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 they got their bachelor's degree within two and a half years. Within two and a half years, they, they got that bachelor's degree. Me, within three and a half years, I was kicked out. <laughs> I did not quit school. I was kicked out from school. It was embarrassing. And my question was, why God, after I received you, after I became a Christian? <sighs> then I learned that. It's just that God doesn't want me to succeed in school. Because if I would have succeeded in school, I would have missed my, what was point number one? Oh. At that time, I didn't understand it. Now, every one of you, Close your eyes. Everything that didn't work in your life, you ought to give thanks to God for it. Thank Him for every door He closed. Thank Him for everybody who walked away. Thank God for who rejected you, for, for the clique you didn't get in. You wanted to, to, to belong to a group, but you were, you, you, you were rejected. Thank God for the woman you didn't marry. Thank God for the men who walk out the door. Thank God. Thank God right now. Thank God. And if you can see them or if you meet them again, you can at least say in your heart, 
I don't hate you. In fact, right now, I want to thank you for leaving me. Everything that lived couldn't stay and everything that stayed couldn't live. God is talking to us right now. God is talking to every one of you right now. I never bless you from what you have lost. I bless you from what you have left. I want you to get this. Don't live in regrets. What do you have now? Whatever you have now, it may look simple. It may look nothing but you bring it to God. God, this is what I have. And you, you read so many times, so many stories in the Bible that with this five loaves and two fish, God multiplied. The widow that has only a, a, a bottle, a small bottle of oil, God multiplied. What do you have? Don't allow yourself to get stuck because you Walk forward and your head turn backward. Thank you, Jesus. I pray the prayer of Paul the Apostle. He said, uh, well, I haven't, I haven't apprehended yet. I haven't reached it yet. But I am going to press in. I'm going to press in. But you cannot press in something you don't know. Allow the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of your understanding. Because the Word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Not for lack of money. Not for lack of friends. Not for lack of fame. Paul prayed that you may know. Know your purpose. Know your purpose. Know your purpose. Know your purpose why you're here right now. Even you don't see it now, you ask, Oh God, now I know. Now I can at least thank you. I can at least thank you. For the situation that I don't like right now, I see that I, my, my focus is in you. My focus is not in my business, but in, it's in you. My focus is not my, in my school, my education, but my focus is in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Open your eyes. Look at me. Let me continue two more points and then we'll conclude. The second point from that verse that we just read. <laughs> what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? You need to know your possession. What do you have? What do you have? <laughs> what do you have? Ooh. Don't look at somebody else's possession. Don't look at somebody else's riches. Don't look at somebody else's talents or gifts. Look at what you have. In fact, you cannot go to the battle with somebody else's possession. You go out to the battle just like David when, when, when Saul gave him his armor. Uh, David said, I, I, it's too big for me. I'm not familiar. I can't walk. But this is what I have. I have this sling. What do you have? God asked Moses, what do you have? A stick. I have a stick. The stick of Moses, when he submitted to God, becomes the stick, the rod of God. What do you have? Know your possession. God gave each one of you. You are very special. You are. You are called, you are loved, you have, you have this inheritance, you have the inheritance. Where's the inheritance? The inheritance is not, it's not somewhere uh, hidden on the mountain somewhere. The inheritance, the treasure is not hidden in the deep ocean somewhere. The, the inheritance is, can you say very simple? Say it with me, very simple. The treasure, the inheritance is hidden in here. 
in this clay, earthen vessel in this clay. The last one, know your power. Know your power. <laughs> your power comes from God. I don't have no power except from God. God wants to build you. If you allow God to enlighten your eyes, you know your purpose, you know what you have, you know your possession, and then the power in you. That's from Ephesians 1, 19. The power that is in you is so powerful. Again, when I look at Eric Ching this morning, wow, it was tough. It was tough to lose your loved one, especially through tragedy like that. Know the power in you. Know the power in you. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that the opportunity is still available to all of us right now. The opportunity is, is, <laughs> is ready. It's, it's, it's in front of us, oh God, and you... You have trained us. You have prepared us. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you cause us to, to, to understand the situation, the, uh, the, the problems that we are facing right now. The challenges is because you allow those things, you allow the people, you allow the situation, even our problem, to mold us, to build us. Can you say amen to that? Pray with, pray with me, would you? Lord Jesus, I open my heart. Open your hearts right now. Open your hearts and allow Him to change the way you see. Your understanding is replaced. Ask Him to, ask him to do that. And He will, he will talk to you. He will, he will change you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can hear from God. Yes, you can hear from God. Allow him to speak to you. you. Open your hearts. You see it differently. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are not going to let us down. You are so good to us, oh God. And Lord, here we are. Enlighten the eyes of our understanding. If that is your prayer, say a good, hearty Amen.